Interview Series. This is actually the second interview I do, and uh, today I welcome Klaus Dixon. So, and uh, yeah, hello Klaus, thanks for taking the time. Uh, would you introduce yourself a bit, please? Yeah, hello guys. Um, so my name is uh, Klaus Ibsen, and I'm currently sitting in my home office. Um, uh, I'm based in Sweden, um, the southern part of Sweden, um, close to a city called Malmö. Um, I'm not a Swedish by nationality. I'm, I'm in fact Danish, um, but I moved to Sweden seven years ago. Uh, well. Here in Sweden, um, I live nearby Malmö, which is very close to Denmark. It takes me about one hour or so to get to my home country, so it's kind of similar culture and everything. But it's cool being here in, in Sweden. Perfect. Thanks again for taking the time and joining my interview. Um, what, what's your role in Red Hat? I mean, you're working for Red Hat, obviously. Um, what, what do you do for a living? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, this is one of the questions that is actually hard to explain to, let's say, my mother. Um, I, I remember when people ask her what her son is doing, and all she could say is that he sits in front of a computer screen. So you can say that's my 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 work. Well, okay, seriously, yeah. Um, I work for Red Hat. I've been a Red Hatter for two years. I got this uh, this hat here two years ago in had to go to Munich to collect it. I guess you have one as well, Marcus? Yes, sure. It's a great app. So I forgot to say <laughs> Yeah, so, well, I've been, um, you can say, a professional open source developer for five and a half years. Um, back then, I was working for a company called FuseSource, which Red Hat acquired two years ago. Uh, and in all that time, I've been more or less mostly working on a product called Apache Camel, which is, uh, you can say, the topic for today's discussion. So I work in the JBoss middleware team as an engineer. Uh, I primarily work on, yes, Apache Camel, and then a few other open source products that we contribute and created, um, Pod.io, Fabricate, and a few other things. Um, on the Apache Camel product, I am, you can say, the sort of like uh, the technical lead from the Red Hat on that product. Uh, I'm the most active contributor on the Apache side. I've been involved with Apache Camel for six, six and a half years. And so, you're yeah. Also a book author, right? So you're oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, me, and, me and Jonathan wrote uh, this book called Apache Camel in Action. Uh, it's a great book, and there's also another great book coming out recently by a colleague of mine, Scott Cranton and Jacob. They wrote another cool book, so we have great books on Camel. Um, it's been, when, when have you been writing that book? When, when did you came in contact with that kind of integration technology and why? Um, so, um, yeah, okay, let's step back again. And, and when did I get in touch with, uh, you can see, uh, Apache Camel? Um, then we have to go back, um, how far do we have? I think we have to go back about seven years ago. Oh, Jesus, that's a long time. Um, back then I was working on a company called um, Civil Bullet in Denmark, and we were a small integration uh, consultancy company with 10 or so people. So we are were contracted to work at clients, at client side. And to be, you can say, the client guard dog and help the client, you know, make the right decision in terms of integration and whatnot. And we primarily work for clients in the public sector, uh, for transportation, healthcare, and so on. So it, I was uh, contracted to work for the capital region in Denmark, in Copenhagen, uh, in the healthcare division. And we were doing a lot of integration, obviously, because uh, in the healthcare industry, they have a lot of IT systems for patient care and whatnot. And that client, well, so to make the a bit more short is that they were looking for, uh, you can say, a new integration platform that could fit within their IT portfolio. So that client uh, was a heavy IBM shop, so they had IBM WebSphere as the primary platform of choice. And so they were looking for something to replace an old uh, aging integration platform which did not fit into that portfolio. And 
And the client was also sort of short on cash, so they were not so scared of trying to look for alternatives that had a cheaper licensing model. And that's where you can say open source came into the to the game. And remember, this is seven years ago. You know, back then open source was wasn't the first choice back then. Uh, so what we did was, uh, the client actually allowed, you can say, uh, quite a long period of time to. Uh, look for that and turn to because the support contract um, was you know five years on for that product, so so we had a good time to look for alternatives and in it was in that sort of line of work that I came we, we came across Apache Camel, and back then Apache Camel was a rather new product. It was only released 1.2 version, uh, three or four months old or something like that. So. What we did back then was to sort of try these open source products, which is, you know, obviously a great thing you can do with these is that you just download them and, and try it on your own. So we did that, and during that work, we found some missing functionalities, some bugs and whatnot. So we started, um, in, in myself in particular, started to contribute some of these things back to the product. And it was actually great to see that that you know, willingness from these communities was to embrace these uh, um, donations, uh, contributions, which we did. Uh, so they were, you know, acquired, uh, put into the product and in the upcoming Apache Camel product. Uh, and basically, an open source guy from the very first minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. But you know, um, you can say the client of ours. Was also being able to see that you can see that it, we can actually, you know, sort of contribute and influence that product a bit, which was something that was not, you can say, as easy to do with historical from the client with the other windows that it has, you know, engaged with. So it, they actually saw that as a sort of like a positive thing um, that they actually had a sort of a much less, you can say, chain of command to the people behind these products. Um, and of course, um, uh, it was not always honky donkey. So what we wanted to do is to prove that you know these alternatives that we found at Apache Camel being uh, in the end was the choice. But nevertheless, was to replicate what we were having in production today with you can say the existing legacy system, and and doing a similar solution using these different candidates to see how they work. And, and also being able to see that they could actually run in that uh, IT portfolio I talked about, you know, in the uh, BitSphere environment. And you have to remember, uh, back then there was also, you know, the operation team was very reluctant to actually support these um, that um, legacy system because it was sort of like an alien system. It was promised to to work in the IT portfolio. They had to back then, but it didn't. So it had to be sort of like a separate entity to be supported. And they had to train people and pay extra salary and support contracts and whatnot to have that going on. So it was always a constant struggle to, to you know, use that product. So the, the, the client was really eager to move on to, you can say, a more a standard solution they had within the organization, which happened to be IBM back then. And this is, was one of, I think, uh, benefits of the uh, Apache Camel is that it was so flexible that it could actually fit into that environment as well. Absolutely. And open source wasn't really an alternative to the broader masses back in the days that changed and got to that point. Also. Um, I think yeah. Camel is pretty much all integration technologies that you can think, even when I wake you up in the morning, that's the first thing you can speak Camel DSL. Um, are there any tools in the integration space uh, that you consider worthwhile looking at at the very moment? Or where are the integration points that Camel provides? Yeah, so the, is there any tools that it's worthwhile looking at? Yeah, I, I definitely think that, and this is a, a definitely thing that um, we got to the point with the Apache Camel product today uh, a while back is that it allows us to focus a bit more on the runtime environment aspect and the tooling per, uh, aspect. So 
there is a, a couple of third-party tooling that um, people can use with uh, Apache Camel. Um, from Red Hat, we have the um, Eclipse tooling. Uh, it used to be called Fuse ID. Uh, today, it's rebranded as JBoss Developer uh, plugins for Apache Camel, which you can install in your standard Eclipse environment. Then you have a you know Camel tooling which has you know a graphical editor where you can design your integration flows. Um, actually, going to showcase that a bit uh, later in this uh, in this talk. And also, there are some tools, web-based um, tools, that can, you know, visualize your Camel application at runtimes and show uh, statistics and, you know, draw graphs and whatnot. And that tool is called Hot.io. I've seen a fancy tweet from you lately about new metrics and flows in Camel visualized in a, in a web UI, but that wasn't happy already. That was something built into a big prototype kind of thing, or was it? Oh, yes. Um, well, that's um, that's the great thing. One one of the great things about Camel is that it's so flexible, and it offers a lot of information at runtime using JMX in, uh, in Beams, which you can interrogate and then get all kind of information out of. So of, of late, I've been uh, working on... Um, well, another cool product I've been looking at recently is the Code Hail uh, Metrics project, which is sort of like allowing to expose metrics, uh, performance metrics about anything. Um, so you get sort of like uh, mathi mathematics um, information about um, your performance of your of your application, and I wanted to uh, integrate that with Apache Camel uh, because then you know people that are already using tooling that support the uh, code hail metrics they could use that for Apache Camel as well. And I posted a screenshot on, on Twitter about that tool, uh, web tool that uh, that is out, out there that can do that. So what I'm saying is that uh, in the upcoming Apache Camel release 214, we will have a, a Camel metrics component that has that uh, information out of the box, and then you, the idea is that I'm gonna we're gonna add a plugin to the uh, Hot IO product. So if you're using Hot IO as the web console, you can just click on that, and you can see this information uh, readily. But you know any kind of metrics tool that works today, you can use. Uh, we'll be able to use them. Okay, awesome. Any any new hot developments out there when it comes to the ne next release of Camel? Or oh yeah. Go straight and showcase something. Yeah, uh, I think um, it's actually let's say for the last couple of months there have been uh, some great new innovation happening in, on the next release of Camel, which is going to be Camel 2.14. Um, we have sort of like an idea to uh, hopefully to get that released. Um, uh, well, the plan was to get it released uh, end of this month, but it may slip just a bit to get these last um, uh, details into the release. But it will come out pretty soon, you know. Anyway, you know, it's a uh, summer vacation for most people, so, you know, I guess it gives us a bit of a leeway to just push back a bit. Absolutely. Um, but in, in recent time, you know, there we have innovated a bit on Camel, and, and that code held matrix component is there. In fact, um, the original component was contributed by a, a person in the community where you can sort of uh, send Camel messages to uh, the matrix registry. So, you know, that's just a, a you know, testimony of the great uh, community we have in Apache Camel. There are so many people that actually you know, use it and contribute uh, back to the uh, Apache products. But if you like to, just give a shout out to the people. I like to hear about great names in the community. So, so yeah, so a lot of great things happening, and and you know, so Camel 214 is going to be a a great new com release. Perfect. You know what I really want to see is uh, a demo. I need a demo. Just let stop talking and uh, start showing stuff. If you okay, so. Uh, let's go and start from the scratch. Let me find the screen share button. Uh, excuse me. Um, I guess, can you guys see the screen? So, okay, so um, one thing I'd like just to mention to the guys is that, you know, if we have a, well, there's a person in the community 
who built a camel post of all the camel components, sort of categorized them in different aspects, like Amazon and files and, and whatnot. So it's quite impressive when you look at it. This is a PDF, one page PDF you can print and then put it on your wall with 150 so components we have. Okay, so for demos, we can go back old school and use a command line shell. So to get started with Apache Camel or to create a new Camel product, uh, you can use uh, Maven Arc for that. So uh, what I'm going to demonstrate here is I'm just going to use Apache Maven 311 uh, and create something from the command line. Um, now I have to say that what I show here on the command line, you can also use from you know editors, Eclipse ID or whatnot. They have um, Maven integration out of the box, so they have sort of like a business, so you can do this graphically. And as a side note, um, this is also going to be possible if we use the uh, Fabricate project, where we're going to have the um, uh, wizards or command line in there built in out of the box, so you can build new camel products out of the box from the Fabricate product. But are, that's a different story. Are there any Forge plugins for Camel already? Um, well, you can say indirectly because uh, the Forge product supports, you can say, generic uh, Maven, so you, you will be able to do that. But um, down the road and being part of Red Hat, we would like to see um, you know Camel integrated in directly in, in the Forge product as well. So. Down the road, it will come there definitely. You know, Red Hat and JBoss, we are strong believer in Camel, and Camel is uh, part of you know different products from Red Hat as well. Anyway, so back to this one. So this is a uh, old school way of creating new Maven products. There's uh, this command called archetype colon generate. It's sort of like an interactive mode, so it goes out on the internet and find all the Maven archetypes that are known to mankind. And I can see today we have 1,117 or something like that. So the idea is that you pick a number for the archetypes. Um, but you know, there's a lot. So you can actually fill it and just type camel. And we get a smaller number. What I'm going to just show is I'm going to create an a, a archetype is, uh, using the Spring framework. Uh, but there are different types of Java, Groovy, uh, Scala. And, Blueprint and whatnot. There are many different types, but this one was 41. After that, you can pick the camel version to use. Uh, 214 is not yet released, so it's a snapshot on my computer, but I can use the official release 213 too. And then I'll give it some information here. Um, so after that, this is your standard Maven. So now it created a, the product called Bar. Inside bar, there's a readme file and a maven pom file. So uh, the readme file is not very interesting. It just tells you how to build the product and how you can run it. Um, so what I'm not going to do that here, now I'm going to switch to Eclipse. Uh, let me find it. So here I have uh, Eclipse. I think it's um, Eclipse Kepler, uh, one of the newer releases. So what I can do from Eclipse is to import that product we just created. Import existing Maven product. And find the bar directory, open. And this is standard uh, Maven integration in, in Eclipse. So there's nothing hunky donkey or fancy there. So what I have here is, uh, is a Spring XML file which has camel. So now, when I open that file, I actually see that in a graphical uh, illustration. And the reason for that is because I installed these uh, uh, plugins for Apache Camel inside the clips that you, know, you can get from JBoss. And so what we see here is a graphical illustration of that um, Camel route. So what it does is that it picks up some files and then uses the content-based router to determine if um, a file, um, messages from uh, um, London, and then it writes that to a directory called UK. Uh, if not, then it writes the message to uh, uh, others. So, and, and the um, Eclipse tool we have here is uh, a two-way editor 
So you can flip between the design mode and the source code mode, and you can, either where you change something, it, the other end is reflected the update. So we can try, for example, just to update this and uh, add a win and, and say if the person is from Berlin. Then it's a German message. Um, and if I flip to design mode, now we can see there's uh, a, in a second win. And it's pretty Look. fast, right? So yeah. Really interesting. Yeah, and uh, the idea is that you, if you select the enterprise pattern, you have down here a properties panel where you can set the different properties that are, you know, that are appropriate for that pattern. So here's the message, for example. Here's the logger. So I can change the login level if I want it, if I can set it to warning. And if I go to the source mode, it should have been applied that change. And here you can see login level warning. So you can, you know, go back and forth. And I have to say that this tooling does not have any sort of like uh, metadata or something on the side. It's uh, through reading the standard camel uh, route description. So if you start using this tooling, you're not sort of tied into that tooling forever. You can just use it or not. And, and also, you know, you have to remember that I just used the standard Apache Camel Maven to create a new Camel Spring product. And then I booted up in Eclipse. But I could just have used um, idea on any other stage or, or without using this graphical tooling. And the tooling is open source and free to use, so there's no restriction whatsoever on that. OK, so just to show you can actually run this one, there is, um, and you these products that are, you can run them using the Maven tooling from Eclipse. So here I choose Run As and Maven Build with the three dots. And then I have a wizard, and in the goal I type camel colon run. Um, this is a camel plugin that allows to run camel. Um, and it's running in which kind of container? In the JVM or? Yeah, this one is just booting up a standard, you know, plain old Java main application. Um, so it's just a, there's a main class that boot up and, and loads the camel, uh, uh, the Spring XML file, and, and camel Spring component will, you know, boot up camel from within Spring. Under a second rate. Yes, it does. Uh, we have different archetypes. If you are, want to create a product for, you know, a web um, war file, for example, there's a different archetype for that. And if you're going down to use um, um, OCI, and we have the blueprint and whatnot. So it's more like you pick the archetype you want to use. And but this is a, you know, spring standard, whatever. Um, so we can see down here the locking is for UK and other. Um, and the reason is that this example comes with two uh, files out of the box, the James Dragon for London and Hiram from Tampa Bay. So what I can do is here I can say, let's say Fritz Waller is from Berlin. And then I'm going to save that file as message 3. Remember, Camel is running still down here in the console, and now we can see it actually picked up. There's a German message. Obviously, that's what was pretty expected. OK, so um, let me just show another thing. Is So now I'm going to boot up a, a, a web console called Hot.io. And Hot.io allows you, you can boot it up from Java. Uh, from Java Jar, which I'm doing here. It's also provided as a WAR file, so you can just drop that into Tomcat, uh, JBoss, Wildfly, or whatnot. Um, and there's actually, there was a Google Chrome extension, so you can actually just launch it like here from your Google Chrome, but you know, Google changed the policy how to, how you can actually do that. So we have to release that. Hot our product as uh, in the Google App Store for people to use. Played around with it a bit, and uh, it actually works once when you install it. You just don't have to close Chrome anymore unless you want to reinstall it. So after installing, it actually works once. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well, we will take a look at that again later on because uh, we think it's a cool way, a sort of like a cool way to launch it. So now I. 
Um, I start a hot oil from Java Jara. It boots up and it's the web console. And well, what I would like to do now is to connect using this web console to the Java application that we launched inside Eclipse. So for that, there's a connect uh, plugin here, a button here. What it allows me to do is to connect to remote or local JVMs and then use the web console to sort of see what's going on inside that JVM. So here is a local tab. So this is actually looking at what Java JVMs are running on currently on my laptop. And the last one, this is if it's you know it's yourself. And the first one, this is the camel run which we launched from inside Eclipse. So what I can do is here click this button and then what it will do is to use the Java agent to instrument an agent which uh, hot hot you can use to talk to that remote JVMs so local JVMs which has happened to be this is so this is just a web URL so when I click this link now I see sort of like the same image but if you pay attention now there's a camel button up here so what hot IO has now detected that inside that JVM camel is running so there's a camel button here so what I can see here there's one camel which has one route called route one and has completed three messages. And, and this, you know, what we will expect because we had the London, the Berlin, and so now we can see that same information. But this is a runtime information. So if the applications keep running and new messages come in, these counters will increase. Um, and I can click a source view to see a sort of like a source uh, illustration of that same visual eye. So this, sign, this is sort of like the same we saw before in, in uh, Eclipse. The, the update button actually could update the route at runtime? Yes, you can actually. Uh, but you know, you have to be a good coder because if you make a mistake, then it will complain. But we can use a new city. Uh, should we take Paris just to go for the bigger ones? Um, use that and then update. But one thing to note is that this update is um, it won't persist the changes back. It's a pure runtime update. So if you terminate the JVM and, and start up that, that camel application again from Eclipse, then of course it will only have the original tree. Sure, but might be a last last resort resort for fixing stuff in production, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. It's you knock yourself out and you prototype stuff. You can, you know, add new stuff to it or something like that. Yeah. And I, I have to say that now um, this source tab is showing an XML representation of that camel application currently running, and it just happens to be that we are also using XML to describe that inside the Eclipse application. But, yeah. but you, it doesn't have to be that. Camel supports different programming languages, so you can use Java code to to describe that same route, uh, a Scala code, or Groovy, or whatever. And but at, but inside Camel, all that whatever you use, it becomes the same model inside Camel, and Camel is able to represent that model as a set of XML. So if we coded this in Java code and click that source button, we can see an XML representation of our application. And this is sort of what you know. What I, as a tooling uses because it understands this XML and just uh, visualize that using those instead. And uh, that is actually a complete client side console. So the only server side component that I've spotted is JLogPR, the JMX, uh, JSON kind of agent running in the JVM, right? Correctly, yeah. I have to. Appreciate and embrace the Jolock. That's an awesome product. You know, if you're not familiar with it, I will uh, suggest you to take a look at Jolock.org. It's a great product. Uh, it makes uh, management fun again. You know, especially if you're using JMX, um, you know, which is sort of like a lot of people have to do. And but then, what Jolock does is allows to expose those JMX and beans and whatnot using a REST API, and it has a JavaScript. It has different uh, clients as well, but a uh, cool thing is that it has a JavaScript client, which is what we use inside Hot.io. Uh, Hot so we use that client to use REST call 
to the, the, the lucky agent that is running inside that GVM with, to trigger those M beams. So from camel point of view, we just keep having standard M beams inside the camel core and whatnot. And then using Geologia to expose those as REST APIs, which we can easily call from Auto.io and other tooling. So uh, it's an awesome product. If users go to download Auto.io, um, it, it's actually all in there, right? So yeah. the plugin is already pre-configured, so all the discovery, whenever a camel application is running, users can just use it, right? So there's nothing to tweak that's not a demo only running on your machine. Yeah. Um, that's true. There, you know, it's a one-stop download. Uh, and different flavors. You know, I was, this one I'm booting up was a Java jar. Uh, as I said before, the different distribution. One is a WAR file you can deploy in Wildfly or Tomcat or whatnot. And there's also for OSGI. So if you use Keras, Service Mix Replicate or whatnot, you can also easily install it there. Uh, and you can build custom plugins and have them seamlessly integrated with it. With Hot IO and this um, also you can um, it has themes and whatnot, so you can actually choose different uh, color schemes. So now we have a dark team. Whoa. Okay. And and this is you know just CSS styling, so you can build your own. You know? And I think uh, Stan Lewis, which is a core developer on Hot IO, he was having a fancy moment going back to the fancy. Terminals. Um, I think we have um, the default team is nice, but you know you can build your own. And these are pluggable, so you can actually just keep the whole other distribution as is, and then deploy your custom theme, and then Hot IO will change that branding. And this is actually what we do in the JBoss uh, products from Red Hat. So we use the standard Hot IO, and then we have a plugin with our own branding there. So it has a different look and feel. Amazing. Thanks a lot for the demo. Is there something else you just want to tell people who are excited for Camel, Hot IO? What else is there to watch out for? Uh, yes. Actually, I will just put up a cool demo, which I actually think they kind of demonstrate what people also can do with um, with uh, Camel. This is from Bilgin. He created uh, two years ago uh, a little application during the London Olympics to visualize what people are twittering about during the Olympics and their, their photos. So I took the liberty of using his application and changing a bit to show uh, pictures from dogs and cats. And these are live from the Twitter wall. You can see what people are these images where people tweet about dogs and cats. Um, I was at first using um, a very famous firm currently, which is uh, selfies. So, but unfortunately, some people take you know up close and personal selfies, so it wasn't appropriate for this uh, live recording to show. So I went for the dogs and cats, and it's it's quite a simple. Uh, Wilkins code is here on GitHub, but it's very simple to do in, in Camel. Uh, simple and simple, not very hard to do. It's Java code, actually. So so what he's doing is to define a camera route that reads from Twitter, does some logging, and process the process extracting the image. And then he has a process to gather the statistics number of you know, tweets and how many were with, the, with an image. Then he fills out the, the tweets which don't have an image. And then he makes sure to avoid any duplicated image. And then he logs again. And then he converts that to JSON. And then he sends that JSON to a WebSocket and a WebSocket channel. And then we have a HTML file, which is the, you know, what we see here on, on the web. This is pure uh, JavaScript using WebSocket to communicate and, and show these pictures. So that's the one way of you can do it. The camel easily. That's a great example to look at and get started. Yeah, uh, and also um, if you're into this kind of time things for you know the development, then there's a, a one cool product as well that kind of keep an eye on, which is called WordX. Um, 
and we have a camera component for that, so you can send messages to and from the Bodex event bus. So you can actually sort of let's assume, assume that you build this application using a Bodex the client side, and then you can still use the camera on the other side to you know integrate with Twitter and and send those messages to uh, the Vertex event bus instead of WebSocket. And, you know, you'll have a nice integration with Camel and Vertex. Awesome. Um, wh when is Camel 2.14 coming out? Well, we are working on the final touches for it. Uh, again, there were some um, uh, innovation happening in terms of, um, I talked about that, uh, coattail matrix. That is almost done, and then there is another piece that is getting almost complete, which is to make it easier to expose the service as REST, but with less coding. So you can sort of describe that in the camera routes using a REST uh, terms. So you can use get and post and put and delete and whatnot in the camera DSL directly. Um, so these are the two major things that need to be polished and, and completed, and then you know, we will hopefully get be able to release Camel. We original plan to get it done at the end of this month, but I think we'll have to push it for a couple of weeks or more, or maybe a little more. So in September, it should be out there. Perfect. Then uh, the only thing left to say is thanks a lot for taking your time and talking a little bit Camel with me. So um, be successful with the next release, and uh, I hope that we get a chance to chat about maybe Hot.io sooner when the next new fancy things are coming there, or we find some more topics to talk about. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.